Okay, as you put the two chassis side by side, you can see they're obviously very closely related. Um, with the new car, there are certain things that might be apparent initially. Obviously, we have the, the enclosed differential as opposed to the open and the RS1. Um, a slightly smaller space for the, the spur gear. Again, we tend to run, one of the first things we do to get the gearing right is to put a slightly smaller spur gear and not to last to run a bigger pinion. Um, but what you do tend to find is everything is more linear in the new car as opposed to the old car which is screws here, motor mount screws here and out of the way basically. Um, the RS2 follows more along the lines of the new MS1 where everything's all in a line. Um, the other thing is as well, the ability to run a shorty pack now is lovely. You can obviously still run a full length pack, um, a 7.2 volt nickel metal hydro pack as well. Um, but the ability to run the shorty pack and have an option to run it front to back as well is something that's new in the car. Um, with the old car, it was simply a matter of of running it at a full size lipo, um, and you you know you could have still put in the the, the shorty conversion kit which is available for the the bd11 bd12 ms1 um but i mean it's it's you know half the price of the car um, so it just didn't seem to make an awful lot of sense everything else is very very similar suspension lines all the same suspension arms all the same um everything front to back as well is is essentially the same um the motor guards lovely we're able to actually use up the root wires through it i don't know if you can see that on the camera or not um and there's plenty stiff enough for everything else i suppose the other question that we're, we've been asked is is about the rigidity of the chassis obviously coming from a no good old mate obviously coming from a, a fiberglass sh double deck chassis to a, a composite chassis now with a, a floating with a floating water mount on it um it's how is that going to affect the car's rigidity and there are not obviously when flex is such a big thing in these days uh, in a modern touring car it's hard to know um there is probably a machine and a calibration and a calculation of doing that i don't have that so what we're going to do is a uh, similar to in the 70s whenever brabham needed to figure out how flexible their formula one cars were and they got a plank of wooden for the bigger uh, mechanics to sit on it to measure the flex we're going to do something similar here so what we'll do is <clears throat> i pick this up and we'll give it a a twist in the same position each way this is the rs1 the fiberglass car first of all and you can see it's it is quite flexible there's quite a bit of flex there okay I'll swap it over now to the RS2, the molded chassis, same thing, same hand position, everything else. <laughs> and I'm actually putting more effort into that and it's flexing less. So it does seem to be that the composite material that they're using for this is plenty rigid enough and not for the job to the job. Um, just as a comparison, because we have the car here. I'm going to lift my MS1 as well, and we'll give it a flex too. Now, obviously, this is a, a different kettle of fish altogether. Um, I don't have the shock towers to, to brace myself against, which is quite annoying um, for this test, but we'll go there anyway. I mean, and it. Is to be honest, somewhere in between the two, um, probably more similar to the RS2 with the, the molded chassis than the uh, the fiberglass of the RS1. In comparison, feels very soft. Um, the RS2 is it's definitely more rigid than the RS1. Um, again flex isn't just quite that easy a thing it's how the car rebounds and uh, structures as well so the only way we're going to get that is to test them on track and see where we get to um 
but again we go back to <clears throat> the cars are yeah superb value for money i mean to give you an idea this is probably the most affordable top line touring car in the market at the moment 549 pounds um and it is just a beautiful piece of engineering um i would you know it would be a a sturdy sort of a fight if you if you argued with me on that one um it is just a beautiful piece of kit but it's expensive we got to remember that that car is more expensive than both of these two together um the rs1's already proven itself in in our hands at least to be as competitive at a club level don't get me wrong the ms1's bound to be quicker um the bd11 was quicker it didn't run a bd12 um but i know the 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 ms the r bd11 was faster than the rs1 but they they weren't as far apart as you would think um they really were close um and the rs2 just looks like a more refined way of doing things um yeah the shorter shocks on the rs2 obviously will help with weight the ability to, to knock your your battery pack forward and back will make a big difference as well on this um whenever you get into into actually setting and playing with these things but i mean if this has been a a step forward from yukoma from what was an exceptionally good entry level car um yeah it's better for the sport better for everybody but when you look at just the sheer cost of these things 149 pounds for that um so i was able to put that to put that in context chassis at 149 pounds hobby wing 17 and a half turn blinky spec motor it was 109 i think off the top of my head um and a reasonable serve with 50 quid assuming you have radio gear and a lipo battery pack that's on the track for 300 quid it's it's incredible obviously it doesn't come with wheels and tires um because what's the point it's just a waste of time and money um simply because different tracks different uses everything else i mean i remember whenever the old associated cars came with with wheels and tires on them and i used to have a box full of them <laughs> it just is pointless these days same with body shells as well so yeah makes sense but i mean to put this into context there's the uh the new aluminium steering blocks for the the ms1 uh, i haven't got them installed yet i've had them here for a couple of weeks and i mean stunning stunning bits of engineering but that's one corner of the car and that was half the price of this you know they were 70 79 i think they were the mad um but you know for 150 quid you can go there go racing and to be brutally honest most of us myself included probably aren't good enough to really make the difference between 149 pounds and 549 pounds there you go like i say next thing we'll do is we uh, at the next race meeting we'll get these out on track together um but the idea is for joey to continue running the rs1 i'll run the rs2 um and potentially if we get a, a decent setup on that i then move on to the ms1 and see how so how everything compares and i say we'll report back at the time thanks for watching see you next time